Hi there! <laughs> Eva here at Crunchy Fingers. Today, which is probably the same day as another video that you can find over here, we are going to be out testing for first time ever this little uh, oldie that I have here. This is the Voigtlander Vito B and it's a fully mechanical camera from the 50s. I have not yet used it, but I don't have any suspicions that it should not work because since it's fully mechanical, it doesn't rely into any electricity. The only problem would be that it doesn't cock the shutter or release the shutter and that I have tested without putting a film through it. So it should work. Another thing about these cameras is that it doesn't need the light seals. It doesn't have light seals per se. So I expect that there's not going to be any problem with the sealability of the film either. The only thing that we need is actually a light meter because as I said, it's man manual. Everything is manual. The camera is not going to tell us if it's exposed or not. So we need a light meter. In this case, I'm going to use a spot meter by Pentax here. And I'm going to pair it up with a black and white Afka APX 400. Why black and white? Because I can develop it at home with my monopath. And why 400? Because the sun is quite low in the horizon and it's going to allow us to take photos for much longer than if we use a faster film, like let's say 100 ASA. Let's load it in and go out, take some shots. Maybe not 36, but maybe 10, 15. We'll see where we can make it till the sun allows us. One cool thing about this camera and why you can get it super cheap, super cheap when you find it in the thrift shops is that the shutter only cocks when it has film in it because it has a little latch here. So in the shop, you are never going to be able to cock the shutter. The camera functionality is off when you are in the shop. So a lot of shops don't think that it's working and they sell it super, super cheap. I got this one for about five euros, I think. <laughs> It has a little latch over here. We just put it in there. You're supposed to close it like this. Now it has got the shutter ready to shoot the first one. And then. So I think that probably should be the first one. Although the first one is normally not easy to know if it's going to be there or not. I'm going to just take what I have in front of me. What do you guys think? Let's see. They says they have a easy zone focusing system, which means if I'm shooting at f um, 5.6 or smaller, if I set it up in the triangle mode, then anything between 2.5 meters and 5 meters is going to be exposed. And if I set it up in the circle mode, anything between five, four and a half meters and infinite is gonna be focused. So it's kind of like a reference thing. <laughs> so I am going to shoot wherever I have in front of me where I load the film. And I'm metering with a spot meter. The very dark shadows, it's a seven exposure value. The highlights, it's a 13 exposure value. Mid-tone is around 10, 11, so I'm going to measure for 11 and at 250th of a second, uh, it's a 5.6 aperture, which is what I want is to get a good uh, infinite focusing that it works okay. So good. I am not so worried about the photos being like, you know, crazily, composedly good and masterpieces here that are gonna come out of this. I wanna see that the camera is working properly and that I, when I read different type of lights and I use different apertures and different, maybe focusing, uh, it was gonna work. So I'm going to take a photo here of this pole. The pole is an F, uh, it's a exposure value eight. The water on the light side is an eight as well. Shadows is a six, so I'm gonna go for a seven. What do you say? He's the master of this spot meter. Like I am a newbie completely. So he's like here, 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 average this, blah, blah, blah. Perfect shot, so. <laughs> uh, F4 is already a one thirtieth of a second, which is a little bit too slow for my hands, probably. I am going to go to maybe 50 and I'm going to put it in aperture 4 
but that means that I need to kind of calculate my distance. I think this is probably, that pole is about 1.5, 4.5 meters, 5 meters. I'm gonna go for 5 meters. I am going to try to get both moons. The moon is really beautiful tonight. Uh, and I can get the moon, real moon and the reflected moon in my framing, I hope. Because another thing is that with these cameras, I don't really know if what I see through the viewfinder is really what I'm gonna get in my photo, so. <laughs> and uh, I'm reading, I want to get the sky well exposed. It tells me it's an 11. The water, it tells me it's a nine, so I'm gonna go for halfway, which is a 10. And that tells me 125th of a second at 5.6. I can see this camera being quite cool for sh shooting street because if you have it at 5.6 all the time and you have it in the circle mode, that means that anything between 4.5 meters and infinite is gonna be focused so you can just like have it here and shoot things around and it's quite um, silent, I would say. So if you're interested in street, I would maybe think about getting one of these, knowing that you can get this one cheap. <laughs> I can get that restaurant and then the reflection as well. I'm gonna go for nine, even if it's a little bit overexposed. Nine, 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 F 5.6, 60th, approximately there. We're doing everything very approximately. <laughs> so. I am going to shoot now here. The, it is a sunset, very beautiful sunset. As Jimmy is saying and pointing out, it's a little bit of a shame we're shooting black and white because the colors are very beautiful, creamy, and perfectly Fuji colors right now. <laughs> But we have this black and white, we're gonna go with it. And because of the sunset is behind there, these very nice uh, reflections on the water as well. So there's quite strong play on lights and shadows. Highlights are 12, 13. So there's one exposure value difference between the reflected light in the water and the light in the sky. So I'm gonna go for 12. And that's going to be quite nice. 12 exposure value. It tells me I'm gonna actually shoot at F11. Yes, let's shoot at F11 at 125th of a second. In Sweden, it seems like everybody gets these scooters and leaves them in wherever they want. Like sometimes I go out shooting and there is a a scooter in the middle of like why would you leave a scooter here can you just go to the place you're supposed to go but no the scooters are everywhere so i'm gonna take a picture of it to uh yeah just to see how the camera does but i can have that as a memory uh, the metering was actually telling me an eight to seven which is quite dark so that is an f4 60th of a second so I put it at F4 um, because it's 60 of a second. I'm going to try to focus the right distance. And I think this is about four and a half meters away from me. So four and a half meters, F4 at 125th of a second. We have uh, someone that decided to put a word play, word joke into their boat, and you're gonna see why. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a picture of that. People look at me like I'm weird. I'm gonna try the camera at the uh, biggest aperture, which is 3.5, to try to get some depth of field and see how this uh, lens is doing. So I'm going to put it at 3.5, and I am going to put this about a one and a half meters away from me, approximately. Yeah, there. And 3.5 hundredth of a second. Yeah. I 
as you see the viewfinder is really not on top of the lens so i'm thinking like i need to compensate a little bit to get the center where the center should be So the minimum focusing distance it says is one meter, which is about a little bit more than my arm, I would say. So I am going to try to focus around here and then see what, what we get a bit of the depth of field thing at 3.5. Uh, the white of the boat is on a nine, the dark water is at a 7, the super highlight in the background is at an 11, so I'm gonna go for a 10 and uh, want a 3.5, so that is about 2 fiftieths of a second, 300, so I'm gonna go for the 300 one that the camera has. This is how my grandpa would probably walk around back in the 60s with a camera like this. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture framing with this thing here and then seeing the boats across. Could look good. Uh, the metering is uh, again a seven, sky a nine. I think I'll go for an eight. That is 5.6 is a 30th of a second. Do you guys think I can, okay, let's make it in between and then put it at 50th and let's focus on infinite. It's very difficult to frame like this, but I guess with time one gets used to it. So I found a pretty cool composition here of a boat that is exactly diagonal to the piers. Looks pretty cool. The light meter, spot meter says a uh, exposure value 8 all throughout the boat, so I am going to go for that. And an 8, as we had before as well, it says a 4 60th of a second. I really hope these shots are not too shaky. <laughs> well guys, uh, this is all for today. We have shot a uh, whooping amount of 13 shots with the camera before the light was just too little to continue with this 400 ISO film. Our One of our favorite photographers says like 36 shots sometimes is too damn much. So <laughs> we shot 13 of them and I hope I can continue shooting some more in the coming days. But uh, with the 13 that we shot today, it's enough to see that the camera is doing what it's supposed to do, which is taking pictures. <laughs> hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys enjoyed the pictures and the process behind it, of course. Leave a comment below, uh, drop a like and subscribe for more photography goodness, more photo shoots and more camera reviews, of course. Bye.